an efficient farm that also looks good. Yes, it is possible. And I'm going to show you how you can make tons of gold while still having a farm that you can be proud of. I released a video about how to make a beautiful farm with decoration and aesthetics as the primary goal. But that farm did not make any gold. So I had to challenge myself and see if we can have both. It turns out we can. But before that, you should really consider hitting subscribe. I release a new Stardew Valley video every two days and soon I will be diversifying my uploads with some other games. Alrighty, let's get started. In any thriving farming simulator, most of your goal will probably come from actually planting and harvesting crops, and Stardew Valley is no exception. Whether we sell the crops as they are or process them into artisan goods, we still need to plant and harvest these crops. And naturally, it would be ideal if we could plant a ton of crops. The more crops we have, the more money we can make. On the standard farm layout, we are kind of spoiled with how much space we have on our farm, which can make it harder to decorate. I decided to take this huge area and dedicate it to crops only. But when you have tons of crops, it can be hard to make it not look repetitive. Luckily for us, we can quite easily make our crop layout look pretty good with some simple shapes, curves, and diagonal pathways. This setup I have here can handle more than 800 crops that are all within the range of a sprinkler. And I only have 24 sprinklers here. I think this crop setup is definitely good enough. It takes up a surprisingly large section on my farm, but leaves tons of space for other stuff. Since we are going for both efficient as well as decorative, we will need to make use of all the extra space on our farm. Over here for example, I could technically leave this out completely, but some crystallariums and solar panels combined with some exotic trees is a nice addition that will give you diamonds, battery packs, while still looking visually appealing. Naturally, to maximize earnings, we need to turn our crops into wine. We will probably be utilizing sheds so that we can get tons of cakes. However, we can and should place some cakes on our actual farm as well, because it can look visually appealing if we set it up with aesthetics in mind. All you need to do is get the shape that you like, then use symmetry to replicate the shape again. Here I only replicated the shape twice due to space, but you can go all out if you wanted to. This setup might look alright from close, but once you zoom out, it really starts to take shape. Now for the greenhouse. I decided to place my greenhouse right next to my main farmhouse, so that I can easily access it when I need to. You could place your greenhouse by your other mini obelisk, but I have other plans for my mini obelisks. Inside of my greenhouse, I am planning on only growing ancient fruit with the sprinkler setup. This sprinkler setup is incredibly resource heavy because I'm using 5 iridium sprinklers with pressure nozzles on them. However, this will maximize the amount of crops we can grow in the greenhouse as there's only a single sprinkler where a crop could go. For trees, I'm filling up my greenhouse with one of the most profitable fruit trees in the game. Bananas are better, but I really like how mangoes look. This small greenhouse is capable of making you a fortune. Fish ponds can be incredibly profitable, like incredibly profitable, but they do tend to take up a ton of space on your farm. So I decided to only place a single fish pond right next to the shipping bin with lava eels. That way I can harvest the fish row, place it into the preservation bin and immediately sell it for a nice little bonus. I decided to only place a single coop on this farm layout. To be honest, coops are not really profitable when compared to barns. So instead of trying to make money with my coop, I decided to fill it up with rabbits and only a single chicken. Rabbits will produce rabbit's feet and they make excellent gifts for the townspeople. A single chicken is enough for a couple eggs for cooked food every now and then. The mini obelisk is incredibly useful. It will let you teleport between two points on your farm and since it is so small, it's pretty easy to place it on your farm in a way that makes sense. Something like this works pretty well. 
placement of your mini obelisk is incredibly important as well. Ideally, you would want to place one in front of your house and another one at the furthest point from your house. I opted to place mine here instead because the natural flow of my farm will naturally bring you to the furthest point anyway. The real reason I placed my mini obelisk right over here is for my obelisk collection. The regular obelisks in this game are incredibly helpful. They will let you teleport directly to that place in the game. The island obelisk will take you straight to Ginger Island and the desert totem, you know, will take you to the desert. These things will make your day last longer because it completely cuts out travel time. You can get incredibly creative about how you set these up on your farm. I choose to place them right up against the wall here because it uses up less space. But you can go crazy with this if you want to. I think flower honey is incredibly underrated. When you produce fairy rose honey and have the artisan profession, each serving of honey will sell for 900 gold and your bee houses will produce flower honey every 4 days, making it basically a money printing machine. A bee house set up like this will maximize the amount of bees whilst looking aesthetically pleasing and most importantly preventing you from accidentally harvesting the flower. I can't remember how many times I've accidentally harvested the flower, turning my money printing machine into something pretty worthless. Regular honey just doesn't cut it. This honey layout resulted in strange sections of empty space. I was not really sure what I wanted to place here, so I played it safe. I planted some more crops, starfruit to be precise. I did not want this many crops on my farm, but the starfruit here looks really nice and they are incredibly profitable, so it just made sense. When you zoom out and take a proper look at how your farm will look, you'll see your farm is slowly taking shape. You don't really need to plan your farm from day one. I didn't and everything is slowly starting to take shape. And so far, I am pretty happy with how my farm is looking. Now for my sheds. Sheds are incredibly important for any thriving farm. I have 4 sheds. The first shed is dedicated to crystallariums. My plan is to make my farm look good, but the inside of my sheds are all business. You can decorate your sheds a little bit, but my sheds are exclusively used for processing machines because I would rather have them in here than on my farm. My second shed is dedicated to kegs producing nothing but starfruit wine. I grow most of my starfruit on my ginger island farm and it can pull in a ton of gold all year round. 3150 gold per starfruit wine. That sounds like pure profit to me. My third shed is dedicated to preservation bins. Sure, cakes will result in you making more money, but I wanted some variety. These preservation bins are exclusively being used with ancient fruit. I have more than enough ancient fruit to keep these preservation bins full the entire year. And my last shed is just here for excessive fun. In here, I have a bunch of garden pots with deluxe retaining soil with some pineapples planted in them. In case you didn't know about this, you can come Combine a garden pot with deluxe retaining soil inside a shed or your house to effectively create another greenhouse. The crops in these pots will literally grow forever no matter the season. They will also remain watered forever because deluxe retaining soil has a 100% chance to stay watered every single day. Getting a couple of these sheds on your farm will seriously make you a ton of gold during any season, even winter. Remember when I said that coops aren't that profitable? Barns are the complete opposite. Barns can and will make you an absurd amount of money, especially if you have pigs. This is not excessive at all, but I have 3 barns all filled with pigs, totaling to 36 pigs. Unfortunately, they don't have that much space to actually find truffles, but they can and they will find tons of truffles. Each iridium quality truffle will sell for 1250 gold, so you can seriously make a killing by just feeding these guys. 
And those are all of my main points of interest on this farm. For the rest of the gaps, I just placed some fruit trees and some random machines where it made sense. Always keeping efficiency of space and aesthetics in mind. At the end of the day, I think this farm turned out pretty good. It doesn't look as good as my other farm where decoration was the primary objective, but this turned out pretty good in my opinion. But what is your opinion? Do you prefer this farm or the farm with only decoration in mind? Mind. Let me know in the comments below and if you ever want to share your farm with me join my discord server and drop a screenshot I'm not as good at decorating as some of you guys and your farm layouts teach me a ton and as always I will see you in the next video